In this video, we're going to talk about the distance formula. The distance formula in the coordinate plane is actually derived from Pythagorean theorem. So the distance formula is uh, a way to calculate the distance between any two points. And generally when we're talking about this, so there's going to be one point and here's going to be another point. When we're talking about the distance formula, we label our two points and we call the first one x sub 1, y sub 1, as in these are the coordinates of the first order pair. And we call this one x sub 2, y sub 2. And we get the distance formula, so if we connect those, that's what we're looking for, is the length of that. If we turn that particular segment into the uh, hypotenuse of a right triangle, that's where we get the distance formula. So if we were to go down and over, we, well, we had to pretend like that created a right triangle. I kind of missed my target there, but that's okay. So this would be a right triangle. And what we, I keep saying right triangles, and why do I say that? Because Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So if we know this length here, and we know this length here, and we square them and add them together, then we would get the length of this. That's essentially what the distance formula is. Now this length A, how would we figure that out based on uh, two ordered pairs? Well, that's the vertical change. So that's the change in the Y coordinates. And the way we calculate the change in the y-coordinates is we subtract their values. We would say y1 minus y2, or we can say y2 minus y1. And then this here, this is the change in x-coordinates. So this would be x1 minus, minus x2. So if a is y1 minus y2 and b is x1 minus x2, if we square those, then that would be the square of the hypotenuse. So then we would take the square root to determine the length of the hypotenuse. That's what the distance formula is. So the distance formula says distance equals a big square root of the change. And, and normally we do write this a little bit different. We say x2 minus x1 quantity squared. So that's like saying, in this case, b squared. Now the reason why it doesn't matter whether I have x1 minus x2 or x2 minus x1 is because those two numbers would be opposites of each other, so one might be 5 and one might be negative 5. When you square them, they both end up being positive, so it ends up being positive either way. Then we say plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared, and same thing, so that, that would have been our a squared. So this is b squared plus a squared, and then if we take the square root of it, that would tell us the value of just c. So that's where the, the, the d represents distance for this. And that's it. So as, if, as long as we know this, we can find the distance between any two points in the coordinate plane. And the good news is, if you forget it, you can always fall back on Pythagorean theorem. You can draw a graph and just kind of base it off that. It's a lot less intimidating to do that, so that's why I keep bringing it up. Okay, let's look at our first example. So we want to find the distance between the given points, negative 3, 8, and negative 5, negative 12. So we'll use both the formula and Pythagorean theorem, but just to show you, so negative 3, 8, I know I need to go to negative 5, so there's negative 5. And I need to go up to 12. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's going to be all the way up there. Okay, so negative 3 up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Negative 3, 8. And negative 5, that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this was negative 5, positive 12. So this is the distance we're looking for is from here to here. So if we create our right triangle, this distance here would be the difference between 12 and 8. So this would have a length of 4. And the distance from here to here would be from negative 5 to negative 3. That's a distance of 2, right? If you look down here, it would be a jump of 2. So that means that this value here, our missing side, our distance actually, so I'll call it D instead of C, would be 4 squared plus 2 squared would be d squared. 4 squared is 16, 2 squared is 4, 16 plus 4 is 20, so 20 is d squared, and then to get d by itself we would take the square root. Because we are talking about the side length, or we're talking about distance, distance is non-negative, side length is non-negative, so even though there are technically two cases where this should be a positive or negative, we disregard the negative because it, it's impossible with the circumstances that we're given. So now we want to simplify the square root of 20. 20 has a perfect square factor of 4, so we can rewrite this as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. 
the square root of 4 is 2, so we would have 2 radical 5. So that would be our distance between negative 3, 8 and negative 5, 12. Using the distance formula, if you don't know it off the top of your head, then I suggest writing it down as much as you can. The x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And what you would do is you would label your points. So maybe I call this ordered pair x1, y1, and this ordered pair x2, y2. That just helps me to plug in. So then I get the square root of, that's negative 3, minus negative 5, quantity squared. Be really careful with that double negative. It's minus, and then the coordinate itself was also negative. y2 is 8, minus y1 is 12, quantity squared. So we end up with negative 3 minus negative 5, that's negative 3 plus 5, that's 2 squared, plus 8 minus 12 is 4, or negative 4, excuse me, that would be negative 4 squared. So we do see a difference here because here we had negative 4, but in the original drawing I had positive 4, but luckily either way when we square 4 or negative 4 that they have the same square. So we get d equals the square root of 4 plus 16, and that would be the square root of 20. So here we see the, the parallel here. We have d equals the square root of 20. And the square root of 20 simplifies, as we did before, to 2 radical 5. In our next example, we want to find the distance again. I always like doing Pythagorean theorem because the more you can visualize this, first of all, the easier it is to remember the formula, but also it kind of makes the formula uh, unnecessary, which is nice. Because the less we have to memorize, the better off we are. So 4, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4 up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's my random line. We're going to leave it there. Negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1 is all the way down here. I'm going to label my points because that's going to help me determine the distance. Negative 4, negative 1, whoops. Let's get rid of that one. Okay, and we're going to draw them. Whoa, I missed my point. Let's make it really big. There, perfect. Okay, so these would be two sides of a right triangle, and you can draw the right triangle up above it or down below it. You just want to stay using vertical and horizontal lines. So I might go up and over, and then I'm just going to be really careful. So this is the distance from negative 1 up to positive 7. So to get from negative 1 to positive 7, that means I would need to move up 8 units. And to go from negative 4 to positive 4, that would be a distance of 8 units. So if I look at Pythag uh, Pythagorean theorem, that would be 8 squared plus 8 squared equals the distance squared. That's 64 plus 64 equals the distance squared. And so 64 plus 64 is 128, so we get 128 equals the distance squared. Take the square root of both. Uh, and remember, we can disregard the plus or minus here. Um, so we get, I'm going to turn this around, d equals 128 is divisible by 64, which is the largest perfect square factor. So I'm going to rewrite it as 64 times 2. Uh, the square root of 64 is 8, so we would end up with 8 radical 2. Using the distance formula, distance equals the square root of x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. So we get the distance equals the square root of, let's see, we'll call this one up here x1, y1, and this one down here x2, y2. So this would be negative 4 minus 4 quantity squared plus negative 1 minus 7 quantity squared. And so we would have, yikes, D's a little weird. We would have a distance of negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8, so that's negative 8 squared. Plus negative 1 minus 7 is negative 8 squared. Negative 8 quantity squared is 64. And negative 8 quantity squared is 64. So here again, we end up with that square root of 128, which we know simplifies down to 8 radical 2. All right, and another example of finding distance. This time we're just going to use the distance formula. So the distance formula says x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared will tell us the distance between the two points. We'll label our two points. This one will be x1, y1, and this one will be x2, y2. So now when we plug in, we get d is equal to x2 is negative 4 minus x1 is negative 2, quantity squared, plus y2 is 8 minus negative 4, 
quantity squared, being really careful about those negatives coming after subtraction. Negative four minus negative two, so minus negative becomes plus positive, and negative four plus two is negative two. So that's negative two squared plus eight minus negative four, that would be like eight plus four, and that would be 12 squared. And again, you can always double check by looking at the coordinates. So the distance between negative two and negative four is two, and the distance from negative four to eight is 12. So I feel pretty good about these numbers. Negative two squared is four, 12 squared is 144. So we wanna take the square root of 148. 148 is not a perfect square. We wanna identify the largest perfect square factor. This one I sadly don't know off the top of my head, so I'm gonna factor out a four first. Since I know four goes into it, it would be four times, and then four goes into 14 three times, and that would be two, 28 would be 37. Oh, I think four was the largest perfect square factor because it's four times 37, and 37's prime. The square root of four is two, so the distance between these two points is seven radical 37. If you're doing a problem and it asks for the exact distance, two radical 37 is the exact distance. If you plug this number in your calculator and you get some decimal that's just slightly bigger than 12, that's an approximation. So anytime it asks for the exact, it's looking for the radical. Okay, in our last example, we're gonna determine if the given points form the vertices of a right triangle. So we have these three uh, points and we can graph them. So three, negative one, one, whoops, move that over a little bit. I'm just gonna the whole thing, sad day. One, two, three, that's as far as I need to go. Negative one, and I need to go down to four. So we have negative three, negative one. I'm sorry, three, negative one. One, zero, would be right here. And zero, negative four is down here. So whether this looks like it's a right triangle or not, we're not gonna judge it off my terrible drawing because this is a very imprecise drawing. What we can do is we can see, do the side lengths match the Pythagorean theorem. So based on this, it looks like this here, right here is the longest side. So we wanna see is the length of this side squared plus the length of this side squared equal to the length of this side squared. So we need to figure out the lengths of, of all three segments. So we're gonna call this point A, this point B, and this point C. And we wanna find the distance, so I'm gonna say distance of A, B. So the distance between A and B, I'm gonna call this one X1, Y1 and this one x2, y2. And then I'm gonna to have to get a little fancy here because I need a third one, so I'm gonna call this one, bear with me, x3, y3. <sighs> okay, so the distance between a and b, that's the ordered pairs with the x1s and x2s. So it's gonna be x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. One minus three is negative two, so that's negative two squared plus this would make positive one, so that would be one squared. So that gives us the square root of four plus one, which is the square root of five. Okay, so we know from A to B right here that this is the square root of five. Next, we're gonna look at the distance between B and C. So in this case, my formula is gonna change a little bit because now I'm using X2 and X3. So it's gonna be X3, zero minus X2, squared plus y3, negative four, minus zero at y2 squared. And let's see what we end up with here. Here we get negative one squared plus negative four squared. So here we end up with the square root of one plus 16. We end up with the square root of 17. So b was up here, this is b, and c is down here. Okay, so those were the two hypothetical legs of this maybe right triangle. Next, let's look at the distance between A and C. <clears throat> so this is gonna be X3 and Y3 and X1 and Y1. So X3 is zero minus X1 is three, quantity squared, plus Y3 is negative four minus negative one, quantity squared. And we end up with negative three squared since I'm running out of space, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that in my head, it's nine. Here, negative four plus positive one is negative three, and negative three squared is nine. So we end up with the square root of 18, and the square root of 18 simplifies because nine is a perfect square, so it'd be three radical two. So now we wanna see if we add up the two shorter sides, and I did 
confirm here because root 5 is smaller than root 17, which is smaller than root 18. So if this was a right triangle, this would be the hypotenuse. We're going to check it. Does a squared plus b squared equal c squared? Big question mark there. So the first one does root 5 squared plus root 17 squared equal root 18 squared. Well, the square root of 5 squared is 5, and the square root of 17 squared is 17. Does that equal 18? No, it doesn't. So the answer is no. They do not form the vertices of a ray triangle.